Welcome to CXO Talk, coming to you from the Oracle Modern CX Conference. We're here in front of a live audience, and I'm speaking with Scott Silverman and Katrina Gossick, two top tier experts. And we're excited to talk with them about customer experience and the future of commerce. So I think if we are talking about commerce and the future of commerce, we should start with a discussion about customers. And so the question that we have to begin with is, what's going on with customers today? How are customers changing and their expectations changing? To me, the one word that stands out is impatient. Um, I, and I feel it myself all the time. I, when I look at, especially around fulfillment and delivery, my, if I see that it's gonna take two days to leave the warehouse and another four or five days to get to my house, I'm outraged. Products available on Amazon, for example, that are now available in same-day delivery or you know, one-day delivery, it's, it's really unbelievable and it's fueling, I think, a lot of impatience. I would agree with that. I think there's definitely a sense of everything has to be right now all the time. And I would just add to that that I think the other expectation on top of that is just everything needs to be frictionless. Um, you know, Payments need to be easy, shipping needs to be easy, I need to find the information easy, I need to you know, get what I need uh, quickly. Um, so yeah, I would say immediacy and, and frictionless is definitely at the core of co consumer relationships these days. Customers are impatient, they're not willing to wait, and they simply want things to be as easy as possible. And if they're not easy, they're gonna click from your site to your competitor's site. I think customers own the brand for that reason. You know, they, have the ability to change how others perceive you as well. So they hold a lot of power because they can jump from your site to a customer to another uh, website very easily and very quickly. There's a lot of choice. So I, the key is to keep their attention. Scott, Katrina said something quite interesting. She said, consumers own the brand. So what does that mean? Consumers own the brand. The days of the brand uh, from on high, you know, managing, being the taste maker, dictating how the customer is going to interact with them. There are, that's so far long gone. If you look at all the different interactions with, uh, you have with a company, I think the company's job is to own as many of those moments as possible. So whether you're interacting with a sales associate in a store or whether you're in, on a website or using your mobile phone to get information or searching on Google for the product, I think it's really the brand's job to own those moments because if you don't, then somebody else is going to. So are we talking here about availability of information and about touch points? Are these the two key issues that you're, that you're both getting at? You want to have the information you want on your mobile phone, you know, like Katrina was saying, from the store associate. You want that store associate to be smart. You want them to recognize who you are. If you have a past history there, uh, it can be really frustrating if that's not recognized. Or you want to know quickly, is that item in the back room or not? You know, if I don't see it on the shelf, uh, don't take two or three minutes to go back and look. Tell me immediately. Uh, or I'm, I'm going to lose my patience and go elsewhere. I'm going to walk out or I'm going to go find somewhere else to shop. So it's not just availability of information, but there's also a major technology component that feeds into this as well. Like you, like you just mentioned two things. You mentioned performance. Performance needs to be there. And you mentioned mobile. I think the key is to really understand your customer and then use technology to unlock the relationship with them. The way I see technology playing a role in this interaction with, with consumers. So all of these are, can we say, different facets of creating that and, and keeping that customer relationship going. It's about selling solutions, not selling products. Or for the retailer, it's about using and, and like building solutions and, exper and experiences, not like, oh, I just ha checked off the box of I'm now using this kind of product and I'm, I've enabled that uh, or implemented it in some way. It's it's. That's, a, I think, a really backwards way of looking at it. So when you talk about building solutions, not products, or from the retail point of view, creating broader end-to-end -end experiences, why is this so hard? If you don't know your consumer, your customer, you don't, how could you possibly know what technology to implement 
to build a relationship with them. I think what's often missing in the e-commerce uh, shopping experience is not understanding the context of, of which the person is shopping or their particular intent. I'll give a kind of a morbid example of someone might be going to a department store and they want to buy a black dress. Well, they could be buying that to go to a cocktail party or they could be buying it for a funeral. And those, those are completely different set of circumstances. And I think if you're face to face with someone in a store, you can size up what's going on. Um, when they're interacting with you in a, with a digital interface, it's really hard. But I think the technology is getting there where there's our ways to get some little clues along the way so that you have a better understanding of that context and the circumstance of that customer than they're, when they're shopping with you. For me, it's more understanding, you know, how, what technologies your customers are using and then implementing an, an ecosystem that interacts with them. So, for example, um, you know, if you know they are an influencer, let's say, you know, track what they're doing on social media, try to find a way to connect it to the store, try to find a way to get them to write reviews to bolster the brand. Data influences some of it, but I think it, uh, it also has to do with understanding um, the context and where your customers are interacting with you. And Scott, you brought up that term context, and Katrina is describing a more holistic view of the customer. Does that cover what you meant by, by that context? Context would be the example of um, someone shopping with you, are they in a hurry or are they browsing? How do you know when that interaction is happening? And I think the holistic view, you've got to take into consideration what they may have looked at, where they looked at it, uh, what's their relationship with that particular retailer to be able to um, have the right kind of interaction with that, with that customer. How can a retailer maintain its brand through all of these very fractured set of interactions that customers have with them? If customers are trying to find you online, content is going to drive eyeballs to the site. So making sure you're showing up in Google searches. But then important, more importantly, when the customer gets to the site, make sure you've got a rich I hate, you know, the, the term now that's being used is life, lifestyle site, um, videos and reviews and, um, you know, information about the products and different ways of representing sort of the physicality of a product uh, online. You know, that's where we're seeing AR and VR becoming more and more important. Um, but for me, the staying present in the digital landscape has a lot to do uh, with the amount of content you're creating around your products and making sure it's consistent. What advice do you both have for organizations who are looking at this saying, yes, we need to do this, but somehow it's not happening? Innovation has to be across the entire, it has to be in the DNA, it has to be like, you know, the, the air that you breathe in, in its culture, it's having leadership that wants to enable that and empower people to bring up ideas. And that, to me is, is, is the where innovation is, is, is really gonna happen. What is your kind of summed up, distilled advice that you would offer almost in a tweet? Um, so if I were to sum it up, I would say commerce isn't just commerce. It's, you know, an entire ecosystem of interactions, emotions with your customer. Um, it's a lot more than just a, a, a shopping cart. And Scott, it looks like you're gonna get the last word. Uh, don't squander your advantages would be my advice. So lean into them. If you have a passionate community of customers, find a way to feed that passion. Okay. Thank you everybody for uh, sitting through this wonderful panel with these two excellent guests. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.